How do we add custom issue types to a company managed Jira project? Let's find out in today's video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value to this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. Inside of Jira, you are going to want to be a Jira administrator in order to do this. If you're not, you're gonna have a really, really hard time doing what I'm about to explain, but you can always talk to your Jira administrator and have them help you out. Also, if you're in a company managed project, this will apply. If you're in a team managed project, these instructions are not going to really apply and a future video will be created to kind of walk you through how to do these steps over there. So if you're in a company managed and you are a Jira administrator, sit down and buckle up because we're about to get, get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna come to the gear on the top right corner and you're gonna wanna go to issues. From here, naturally you are already invited, you are already arrived at the location where you need to do this. This is by default the first configuration place that Jira will take you to when you click on that gear and go to issues. So this is a really, really good thing that we're already there. So all we gotta do here is come over to the right hand side and click on this add issue type. From here, you're gonna give the issue type the name that you want. So this can be anything you want. It can be a risk, it can be a defect, it can be positive things like uh, tech debt. It can be pretty much anything you want it to be. So I'm gonna create one called technical debt. And that's all you have to do from the name perspective. Next is the description. And the description is really just there to help add a little bit of extra flair, if you will. But don't expect your end users to always be able to see that description information. So just count and bank on the fact that you have a really, really good name. Description is gonna be optional. Underneath this, however, we now have the type and we have to make a selection. Are we gonna pick standard issue type or subtask issue type? And you may have also be wondering, well, how do I add like an epic? I wanna add a new epic. Well, let me break your heart first with the epics. First, you cannot create an extra issue type that is of the type epic. There's only one and one only, and that is the epic. And the epic is of the type epic. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And so Jira will only allow you to create one of two types, either a standard, which is basically gonna behave like a story, a task, and a bug, or a subtask, which is gonna behave like a subtask. And all that means is that those issue types if you create a subtask issue type, it will not show up in the dropdown when you go to create an issue. Those subtask issue types will only show up when you are inside of like a story or a task or a bug or another standard issue type and you go to click that add subtask button, then that new subtask issue type will show up. So that's kind of the difference and most folks, most of the people that I work with, I would say some 90, 95% of the time, we want to add standard issue types. And so the subtask is going to be that rarity where everyone's in a blue moon, you'll select subtask. For the most part, you're going to want to bank and count on the fact that you're going to add a standard issue type. Now, this right here is that epic. Remember I was telling you a few seconds ago that you can't add other ones. You'll notice that the epic is a very, very special type of issue in Jira, at least today, at least as of this video. I do know that Atlassian is planning on updating the way their issue types and relationships work. So this may change in the future, but today, as of this writing of March, 2023, you have to uh, respect the fact that you can only have one and only one issue type that is of the type Epic. You can rename the Epic, not recommended, but that's really your only option. If you're trying to create like a second type of epic or a third type of epic, it's just not gonna be possible. The other thing I wanna highlight is that while we created a standard issue type in the previous screen here, you'll notice that when I come down and I go and look for my uh, tech debt task that I just created here of the type base, it doesn't equal standard. It's not the same thing. Why Atlassian does is I'm not quite sure, but base equals standard, which is the button that we selected earlier. Why Atlassian wouldn't just name it the same? Add it to the mystery of Atlassian-isms, if you will. But know that this base here is basically the standard, and this right here, this technical debt, is, is the custom issue type that we just created. 
Before we add it to our projects though, we want to do a couple of other modifications. Now, these are completely optional. You don't have to do what I'm about to do, but this is just my OCD because I just do not like that little gray square. It just, it feels so depressing to me. So the first thing I do after I've created a new custom issue type is I come down, I find it, and I swing myself over to the right, click on the ellipses, click on edit, and then this will pop up this screen. In this screen, you have the option to now update the name. So for whatever reason, if you didn't like the name, and maybe you picked the wrong one or you work with a really picky team and they just didn't weren't happy with it either, this is where you would come and update it. Rather than delete it and make a whole new one, you can always just update that one. I don't recommend that you rename default custom types, like your stories and your epics and your tasks. I would leave those alone. I would not edit anything that's out of the box because Jira is designed out of the box to work with those. So don't touch those. I would recommend any changes that you wanna do, any other flavor of custom types that you wanna add, add new ones. Don't rename existing ones because there could be downstream effects that would negatively impact your experience with Jira. So always make a whole new one using these instructions that I'm showing you today, okay? But the one thing that I do wanna highlight is when you come down to issue type avatar, click on the select image and pick a new image. You do have the option to upload your own avatar. I've never personally done it, but I do know that there's some pixel requirements that you wanna be very mindful of, but I usually just get very creative with the stuff here. So technical depth to me is going to sound like a diamond and it sounds like a diamond to me. So we're gonna select up, uh, the diamond and then I'm gonna click update. Once I click on that update, you will notice that when I scroll down, it is now not with that ugly gray square. And now we have this beautiful blue diamond. So once that's done, we are ready to proceed to the next step. Now here's where we hit a fork in the road. We have two ways to go about this. We can either A, go to the Jira project and add that issue type to it, or B, we can go to the issue type scheme and add that issue type to the scheme. Because the schemes are associated to our project, that issue type is gonna be automatically inherited and linked back to that project. So you can go either way. Now, why would you wanna go either way? Well, if you're only gonna add this custom issue type to one project, it's easier for you to just go to that project and add it there. If, however, you wanna add this issue type to many projects, you want two or more projects to have this issue type available, then I recommend you go down the issue type scheme route. Now, I will walk you through both, so make sure you're paying attention here. So let's do the easy one first. Let's go to the project. And so I'm just gonna go to a random Jira software project. Now keep in mind, these do have to be company managed, so check your bottom left corner. And you're gonna go to project settings. At this point, I do wanna point out, because the issue type exists, because it's an issue type that is now available, it is in your system, you don't have to be a full Jira administrator to do this next step. So there may be an opportunity where you ask your Jira administrators to create these issue types for you, but then you have a little bit more creative as to when and how you add them into your project. So once you're in your project settings, you're gonna go to issues, and sometimes you gotta expand this one, sometimes it's, it's collapsed, so you gotta expand it, and then you're gonna look for types. Once you're here, you're gonna be able to come over to actions and click edit issue types. From your edit issue types, you should be able to see your technical debt here, and all you gotta do is slide it on over to the left, where it says issues types for this current scheme, and most importantly, hit save. So once you hit save, Jira's gonna register that. You'll see that your technical debt is here. And the test that you can do is you can click on this create button, make sure you're in the current project that we just added this issue type to, and confirm that it shows up in the dropdown. If it does, two thumbs up and you are basically done. Now, let's go over to method two, which is let's assume that we wanna add this issue type to many projects, right? And so to do that, you now are back to having to be a Jira administrator. So we'll go back to our gear, back to issues. But this time, instead of going to issue types, which is again, that default location landing page where we land, we are now gonna go to issue type schemes. Now the scheme is basically a bucket. It's a little container where you have issue types in it. And you can take that bucket and apply it to different projects. So rather than doing what I just showed you where you gotta go to the project, you gotta go to the project settings, you gotta expand issues, then you gotta click on types, then you gotta click on actions, then you gotta add it, and then you gotta drag it, and then you gotta save it. Rather than doing those steps over and over and over and over and over, getting carpal tunnel, 
you can just simply add an issue type, the new one, to an issue type scheme, and any project that uses or leverages that issue type scheme is automatically gonna get that issue type. So we're a couple of clicks versus thousands and thousands of clicks. Maybe thousands is an exaggeration, but you get the point. So once you're inside your issue type schemes, you either wanna find the one that is associated to your project, or maybe you wanna make a whole new one and then apply it to the project later. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna come down and I'm gonna go to this DC Kanban one and this is the one for this demo projects is the one I'm gonna add it to. Just, you're gonna wanna pick the one that's important for you. So I'll click on edit. And once I click on edit, I'm basically taken back to that same screen that I saw earlier. The only difference here is when I do this and I click save, obviously this is a really bad example because it's only shared with one project, but ideally this is a scheme that is shared with multiple projects. So rather than doing all those steps over and over and over, you're just doing it once and you're doing it here. You click save and now like magic, all of your projects that share this issue type scheme now have that issue type available to them. And that's it. I would recommend you again, hit that create button. Actually, let's just do it now. You hit that create button. You go to that one project that I just added it to. It was called demo contracts. And then you click on that issue type drop down, and you can confirm that it's there. But also another test, a good sanity test, is click on another project, one that you didn't do, click that drop down, and it should not show up. So if it shows up in other projects that you didn't want them in, then you did something wrong and you probably messed up your issue type scheme. So make sure you're doing that correctly. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't already, I subtly added a please subscribe and smash that like button banner. So hopefully everybody is smashing that subscribe button. And if you got value of this video, smashing that like button. Make sure you share this video with your team, with your coworkers, with your boss, with everybody that you know that uses Jira, as that really does help support and grow the channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'm usually pretty good about responding back to all of those. And I appreciate you taking the time watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.